Hello, and welcome to the first installment of What Happens When You Trap a Totally 100% Sane Individual in a Desert Hellscape. In other words, Terraria Master Mode, except the world has generated as a striking resemblance of the Middle East. Now, I had never played Master Mode before this video, and throughout this playthrough I came to learn that the Master part of the name means you, yourself, have to be a master of your own mind. For example, not giving in to the urge to poke or in any way interfere with the harmless critters. Or, thinking you are safe when doing the most mundane task known to man. Both activities in any other difficulty are perfectly fine things to do. However, this difficulty is not normal, and said decisions here will end up with you being completely dismantled on the atomic level. Then, you are reincarnated as a new, stronger, smarter being, only to do it all again five minutes later. And, as I mentioned before, the entire world, excluding the jungle and tundra, is covered in sand. Transforming an already difficult playthrough of Terraria into somewhat of a gauntlet where if you are not constantly checking every pixel of your screen, you are punished by having spiked plants held at you at three times the speed of sound. Now, some questions you are probably wondering. Is it even possible to beat the game in this ungodly state? And what counts as beating the game? Well, the goal is simple. Defeat the gods of this land, which there are quite a few of, and do so by collecting and crafting powerful weapons and artifacts, because you have the potential to be stronger than everything else, and they don't. And is this possible given the condition of the world? I have no idea. That's why I'm trying it for your entertainment. So without further ado, let's begin. Our journey begins on a flat stretch of dune, where we start by gathering some cactus, as well as butchering some of the native wildlife, to which we immediately receive karma in the form of a rolling cactus, the first of many deaths caused by this horrific entity. Then, after sealing up the nearby hellhole, we build a rudimentary shelter and gear up by covering ourselves in cactus flesh. Now, we may seem quite weak, but remember, our power will only increase. With the first night over, and after hunting down one of the locals that had been lurking outside, we start digging straight down and hope to find some of the precious metals this world has to offer. In particular, iron and platinum. Iron for an anvil, and platinum for tools, and to help create the item that summons the first boss. Little did I know, however, where I was heading was a cruel, unforgiving place, filled to the brim with some of the most evil and annoying creatures in the entire game. And it also contains the largest amount of those evil green balls. Our second major threat were the antlion charges, a fast moving insect that if not kept at sword's length could easily kill us in just two hits. Luckily the first one we killed dropped its lower jaw in the form of a blade, which later on turns out to be quite effective against the very enemy that it came from. Then as night fell we warmed our toes by the campfire and prepared ourselves, as navigating the depths of the desert would not be an easy task. The next few days were spent expanding the mine, gathering ores and other vital resources, as well as making a home for the local merchant to move in, so that I could purchase an unethical amount of shurikens and never use a single one. Not long after, we dug and found an underground magic mushroom plantation containing a heart crystal, as well as a handful of crimtain ore. And back on the surface, we got to work making some better tools only to be interrupted by a green slime dropping the cactus equivalent of an atomic bomb. After some more mining, acquiring new armaments, and plenty of deaths, the gods decided to throw a little challenge at us. Now, the day was somewhat peaceful, and played out like most of the rest, and mainly consisted of gathering resources. However, it was what the night would bring that would be the problem. A certain event that brings foul creatures, tentacle and boosted enemy spawn rate, but usually this isn't too bad, so long you're not playing on master mode, along with a mod that came straight from the depths of hell. 
As the blood moon rose, I tactically retreated myself using the nearest cactus and prepared for the onslaught of enemies. Surviving the night would not be easy, and the approaching threat was sure to bring plenty of suffering. Third one in a row. How many cactuses are there? After a victorious night, the next day was spent mining, as well as purging some ancient ruins in search for an extractinator. A device which would have allowed us to get our first class-specific armor set, however, this never happens as we never end up finding one. After this, we decided to go on a small expedition to try and find the nearest Crimson Biome, a wasteland made of flesh and blood containing Crimson Hearts, which we must destroy in order to progress the game, as well as getting some unique items. Why is there so many what the f- Once we had returned, and tested that the weapon we got can indeed kill scorpions, we got to work creating an arena, where we would fight the first boss. Now, at this point we weren't too strong, but we could just about handle most of the enemies the game currently had to offer. Given this, we thought it would be a good idea to challenge the first god, but it turned out to be not what we were expecting. As we were completely unaware of this, however, we continued as normal, and started by expanding the luxurious housing complex for our NPCs. and of course, making sure to completely decimate ourselves during the process. Soon enough, an illegal arms dealer found refuge in our small compound, and after finding out that he already had a date with Catherine the nurse, after arriving only 15 seconds ago, we purchased an unethical amount of ammunition and prepared to fight a god. Now, given that I was a good few hours into the playthrough at this point, you would think that I would clear the arena of any hazards, because the hazards in question tend to deal quite a bit of damage and also considering the nature of this boss being similar to other enemies that have used this same hazard to murder me before. What the f***? You know, looking back on that fight, we uh, definitely made some mistakes. <laughs> Not many, but you know, mistakes nonetheless. Now, after seeing that amazing show of strength and skill, a second god decided to challenge me without summon. But as he will find out, his fate is that of prickly nature. Goals. Okay, what the f Okay, sure, sure. Wait, a cactus got him! A cactus got him! There's no way. <laughs> Rolling cactus for the wind. 
As you clearly saw, we absolutely outskilled and thoroughly smacked the Eye of Cactus, granting us a very strong item that we will be using for most of this playthrough. With this, we were ready to start making some real progress, towards our goal of becoming the strongest living thing in all of the desert. But of course, by now, it was only natural that we get interrupted once again, this time by an army of humanoid creatures, said to have come from a land much wetter than here, and that have been seen to possess less than peeling sets of teeth, commonly known as the Goblin Army. After that minor inconvenience, we finally upgraded our armour, and then decided to summon King Slime once again. Now, this fight took way more attempts than I'd liked, so much in fact that the time I did defeat it, I forgot to record the audio, so I'll put some music that I think perfectly reflects how the fight went. Moving swiftly on, we then headed on over to the jungle and searched for a boomstick, and got lucky with the first chest we found. And as I was pretty confident with the next fight, we travelled back to the crimson to kill yet another giant cactus. After his defeat, we could now use parts of the Brain of Cactus to craft a whole new set of tools, weapons and armour, replacing our old ones and allowing us to progress further by being able to mine new ores and challenge new gods. The first of which is located in a giant hive deep within the underground jungle, a harsh, humid place home to an array of annoying creatures. But at least there's none of those evil green balls. The search for a giant beehive was long and gruelling, spanning many in-game days, or about an hour real-time. But eventually, after several deaths, some cactus-related, some not, we stumbled upon a huge golden nest. Oh, finally. I'm so hungry. But there wasn't exactly a door letting us into this thing, and we also needed to gather a small amount of the very outer shell in order to craft a reliable summon item for the boss. So like any good power hungry maniac, we proceeded to do what the goblins call a light excavation. We then whipped up a small arena and summoned, yep, you guessed it, another giant cactus.
With the defeat of Queen Cactus came more advancements to our progression and towards our goal of great power. At this point we were one god away from the fleshy one himself, the one which marks the end of an era, this video, and the beginning of another. But there was still a fair bit of preparation to do before that, like heading straight back to the jungle to defeat Queen Cactus again, and again, because the first time we beat her, she didn't drop a bow made out of bees. The second thing we needed to do was visit the goblin scum artist that we dragged out from underground. And while he mentioned something about spiked balls, a phrase which now triggers what the nurse calls extremely violent outbursts each time I hear it, we gambled our life savings away a slightly better equipment. Then it was off to find an old man that lives peacefully in a nearby dungeon. And after a good bit of manual labour, we were ready to challenge the next god.
With the Skelecactus defeated, we now had access to the Old Man's Sex Dungeon. A hellish place home to new loot and new enemies. What the hell is this? However, at the moment, we were only after two items. A shadow key and a cobalt shield. The key to open shadow chests and the shield to grant knockback immunity. With these items swiftly obtained, it was finally time to venture to the very bottom of the world. The Underworld, Terraria's Hell, home to all things unholy, and yes, green balls included. However, we were here for only one foul creature, a great wall consisting of flesh, blood, and of course, cactus. The one wall we needed to collapse in order to further our power and eventually become a god. But before we could challenge him, we first had to construct a crude bridge made of hardened sand, stone, dirt, and just about anything we had lying around. Then it was finally time, all we needed to do now was to make a sacrifice to the boiling magma in order to summon the wall of flesh.
The fucking cacti got him. That's crazy. And with that, the ancient spirits of light and dark had been released. And with them came... Well, that's for another video. If you made it this far, thank you for staying until the end. That really tickles the algorithm's nuts. The next part of this will hopefully be out in less time it took to make this. I know some of you have been waiting many moons for this video. That being said, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to check out my Discord server if you're interested. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.